What up, Internet Land? Mark Fest, author, creator of Survival Guide for Living Car Free in America. I have been in hiding for a little bit, both from North Dakota and from my channel. I owe you an apology on that. The fact that I'm prone to disappear doesn't mean it's right. All I can say is, those of you who are still here, thanks for staying. So to share some of what I've been up to, uh, I spent 10 months in Arizona at the house of an elderly relative. Um, this included the uh, summer of 2023, which at least until now, uh, was one of the hottest summers in Metro Phoenix. Um, no, not if, I won't say no records, not many records for hottest ever were broken. Uh, records, though, for longest, hottest, sustained time period were what was broken. Longest streak of nights over 90 degrees and a few over 100 degrees. Hot, stupid sun. Anyways, talking to neighbors and pondering life at 119 degrees, I came to realize that the town that this elderly relative lives in is a fire trap. And that, that's a little unsettling uh, in light of uh, Paradise, California and Lahaina, Maui, Hawaii in particular. Now, the thought that most people have towards such is, oh, well, I can just drive my car and drive away. I want to point out to you here that with the town I stayed in, these are the only ways in and out. If a wildfire breaks out, 35, 40,000 people are going to jump in their cars at once and roll down these particular routes. And that's if they make it out. These people did not make it out. Again, Paradise, California, Lahaina, Maui, Hawaii. Back in Arizona, we were part of the problem. This was our backyard, all of it. So along with the danger of fire and wildfire, we had the danger of criminals. This is the perfect place for them to hide both for uh, escaping something, escape and evasion, as well as for home invasion. And for arson. Oh no, nobody would do that. Um, Got to point out that if somebody decides they want your property badly enough, Burning you out of it is a good way to get you to sell fast. Uh, depending on the local scuttlebutt uh, relating to Maui, uh, that is a legitimate theory to consider. Arson is a difficult crime to prove. You just blame it and frame it on the neighborhood kids smoking weed out in the woods. Um, and then selling a house with an overgrown yard. I got to talk about property values for a moment. Mabel, come quick. This guy's talking about property values. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to talk about property values. If the yard is overgrown and a buyer has the tiniest bit of savvy, you're going to have to accept a lower offer or spend thousands to have the yard trimmed. And if you're rushing for a pending sale or if it's a busy time of the year for lawn crews, likely tens of thousands of dollars to trim. 
or you can take care of what you already should have taken care of by yourself. Now, in reference to fire and criminals, uh, a family friend of ours said, oh, well, you, you can't live in fear like that. Living in fear. Now, the evil twin of living in fear is the statement, there's nothing I can do. To which I ask, are you sure about that? Going back to property values, there's a lot of retirees in that area, and it's kind of funny, you know. Their stock or annuity yield drops by like a hundredth of a point. They'll spend hours on the phone ripping their broker a new asshole, or more likely that of some poor intern. Yet that same person would never take such a basic step to protect their number one economic asset and home base, their house. And that's before we touch on proactively saving one's own life. Tied in with property values is homeowner's insurance, which has not just become more expensive, but has also become harder to actually obtain I guess the business of insuring homes has gotten harder because insurance companies are not just doling out all-inclusive policies like candy for a simple inexpensive payment anymore. In some cases, they are pulling out of entire states, most notably California and Florida, though those are hardly the only two. And in the places they still offer policies, renewing has become expensive. And those same policies are covering less. Then homeowners get hit with an additional surprise, specifically drones doing flyovers and taking pictures. Suddenly, homeowner receives a notice in the mail. Fix items A, B, and C in such and such time frame, or we're not going to renew. Repair items could be anything discolored roof, tree branches, overhead, or firebrush. Similar to trimming before you sell, if you trim for the sake of keeping your homeowner's coverage, it's cheaper and easier if you can do that at your own pace. Whereas, if you have to adhere to a deadline, like send proof of completed repair within 60 days, 90 days, it's going to cost more to do. And this is important because most mortgages don't just require you to pay on time and be done. They also require you to have homeowner's insurance because they're protecting their own investment. I'm not sure how that works, but if you can neither obtain nor afford homeowner's insurance, you are in violation of your mortgage terms. Even if you are current on the payments, that's never a good thing. Tim Grover, former personal trainer of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant says that a situation only becomes a problem when it is unaddressed. Correct. Unaddressed problems push for attention via both the subconscious and conscious alike. There's so much press about mental health issues. And the medical science solution to mental issues typically involves everything from lots of pharmaceuticals, the names of which most of us can neither pronounce nor spell, to sex changes. Now some of that's the medical world. If you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And some of that is monetary incentive. Actually, a lot of that's monetary incentive. And for any medical professional who's not like that, respect and admiration, though please speak up. 
if you don't directly call out your coworkers about such at least share on YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, Patreon. Regardless, unaddressed situations or problems, they suck up mental bandwidth, they fritter away your personal confidence, even from the subconscious. And so many people are struggling with self-esteem and self-confidence, and in many cases this kind of thing is why. When you know you can do something, you know. You know! And we can outwardly pretend to others that we don't know. Or, uh, again, there's nothing I can do. Yet you know you can. Now, attacking a fire trap or crime hazard problem, you don't have to smash yourself like David Goggins. So if you don't go through the basic motions of showing up or even making a minimal effort, when, not if, when obvious visible disaster strikes, that's on you. I hope you and your loved ones make it out alive, but if you don't, that means you spend the last moments of your life being roasted like a turkey or being tortured to death by a home invader, or seeing a family member getting the same. And that true insult will be inside your head. Your last thoughts would be remembering how you could have addressed the problem months or years ahead of time, and you didn't. So, Rather than letting my own self-confidence and self-esteem dwindle away while playing Minecraft or watching Netflix, rather than letting the unaddressed problem literally grow bigger each day, I chose to address it. First with a rental trimmer, then with a bought trimmer, not to mention handsaw plus pruners, now, we're talking about the edge of Arizona Hill Country, so other things to address. It's very dangerous terrain, blatant wilderness, not to be trifled with. The land there kills people for fun. You got mountain lions, coyotes, javelinas, scorpions. These guys hide up in the trees, so look out when trimming up above. Good old rattlesnakes. They hide in the rocks. They uh, go up in the trees. They try to come into houses. They even hide in the bushes. So look out for them because encounters with a rattlesnake absolutely can be fatal. Wherever you live, there are problem species to deal with, whether it's moose, mountain lions, or mosquitoes. If you're considering a project like this, do some basic research about where you live, especially if you're new to the area. Wherever you live, check in with local farmers, parks department, or wildlife extension, so that when you attack your yard, you don't get attacked back. The plus side of Law of the Jungle is that various plants, trees, animals enhance or discourage other things. It's really a positive to know to leave such and such plant, tree, nest, or burrow alone. Not to encourage paralysis by analysis because that's a hazard in its own right. Just get your basics so that your yard attack is not interrupted or even stopped entirely. Now, another argument people have with projects like this is, why should I do something I could pay $50 an hour when I could be doing something that would make $500 or $5,000 an hour? And that's legit. 
and maybe you should hire somebody, then why haven't you? Um, though if you're making that kind of money, you're probably not watching me. Though, returning to the mental health theme, trimming brush and general outdoor work is like the most awesomely therapeutic thing in the world. It ranks with riding a bike everywhere. Though, let's say you make five million dollars an hour, that means you're thinking about five million dollar questions or ideally five hundred million dollar questions. How do I keep this competitor from stealing my lunch? How do I deal with this problem customer, problem supplier, problem employee? How do I resolve this family issue? How do I crack this market? If you, now, if you are taking your tools out for the day under this, the answers are going to come. Or because genuine success means we're talking about wisdom, the right questions will come. Which that leads to the true answers. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. I, I should be concentrating my efforts over here. Wait a minute. What am I stressing about this? That's his problem. That's her problem. Well, let me talk to so-and-so about this. I, let me get their take on this. Or... I'm being a doofus, this, because this doesn't matter at all. Because anything that ends with you smacking your forehead with a sarcastic, duh, you just got shown the money. You think you should still be staring at a screen? For a prominent example, consider former President Ronald Reagan. Whether you like him or not, in the world of CEOs, presidents, leaders, he was pretty high up on the scale of effectiveness. Now consider, whenever he went back to his ranch in California, trimming brush, chopping wood, he loved that shit. Absolutely loved it. Now, some would say he could have better spent his time further studying the Soviets or going to Boston to suck up to Tip O'Neill or such. Though again, consider the end result. Ronald Reagan was respectively effective. Anyways, week after week, I addressed the situation. Boy, did I address it. I did not log the time it took. Basically, three or four months. I quite enjoyed doing it, and it was for family, so not like billable work, which, of course, I would document. Though, trimming three quarters of an acre from near jungle down to walkable territory, you don't finish that in a weekend unless you have a lot of people helping you with it. And that is a mega educational side benefit. We are such an instantaneously oriented microwave society. We're all about post viral and it'll go viral. Yet for every one of those, we don't hear about the millions of others that languish untouched with not even a dozen views. Could be a good video, a channel with potential, though because it gets given up on, we never see nor hear about such. It's very easy to forget anything of value, anything of momentum, it takes sustained time and effort. And if you want to get to the top of the food chain, like Jeff Bezos, Alex Hermosi, David Goggins kind of level, uh, top of the food chain. You got to hit on that shit regularly for an extended time period. Back to myself personally, going from this to this, that takes months. 
and the confidence one gets from accomplishing such, I'll take this into any job interview, any presentation, sales call, sales visit, bar stool conversation. I would say faith in my own abilities, though faith implies faith in the unseen versus confidence based on tangible fact. I did this. And unless you are in a wheelchair as such, you can do this too. Educational side benefits. I now know what the neighbor or their yard crew dumped in the wash. I have an idea of what eats what and where. We now know where the property line really is. We now have a clear field of vision. And in general, where we ended up, criminals, this ain't the place for you, man. If a wildfire is combined with wind, we are likely still doomed. Though we at least have a chance, especially if we can prevail on neighbors to do the same with their yards. Firefighters, thanks to trimmed wash, which is also the property line, they have easy entry to three or four other properties. And a yard like this, they'll probably make an effort to protect our house. Returning to the altar of property values, realtors and any buyer, they can safely inspect the entire property on foot. The yard looks great. I <clears throat> accidentally trimmed onto neighbor's property. So our property looks bigger than it really is. My thousands of dollars of work keeps tens of thousands from being bargained away from the asking price. It keeps tens of thousands from being spent on an emergency trim. And in the event of a fire, we at least have a chance. So whether you're on two feet, two wheels, four wheels, Step out into the yard and see what you can do. Now, the emergency prep question relating to car free. How would you handle it if fire, wildfire breaks out? The orange glows on the horizon. It is neither sunrise nor sunset. 40 mile an hour wind is blowing it straight towards us got maybe 15 to 45 minutes, how would I handle? If I live there, I would also pre-install a water pump plus hoses. The pump itself would be fueled by propane, diesel, natural gas, or such. That is to say, run independently of local electrical power or natural gas line, because those would be very prone to being shut off in event of uh, wildfire or such. Basically, I and whatever family that's still around would make a last stand from the roof. Without such, the town has a lot of retirees, so it's pretty strong on elderly services. So this relative could easily call the city and say, I'm stuck here, and she would be hauled out of there pretty fast. Where to? Who knows? With government, you got to ask questions like that. But she would not be live roasted to death like a turkey. Of course, not all local governments provide that level of service. Maui certainly didn't. Uh, also, this elderly relative is not the only family in the area, so she would be absolutely hauled out of town regardless. Subnote here, 
always maintain cordial rapport or cordial enough with family friends neighbors because even the ones who vex you still might need to count on them in life or death situations like this as far as my own escaping such I keep a grab and go bag nothing big just like extra shirt pants change of underwear account numbers printed paper a little water and that town is elevated higher up than the rest of Phoenix so taking my grab and go bag and Literally rolling down the hill to Mesa or Scottsdale is not just a practical escape solution. It would likely be faster than the traffic jam that results from 35,000 people jumping into their cars and hitting the road at once. So that's how I'd handle that car free. On that note, like if you did, comment because that's how I get ideas subscribe so you can see more and if you want to see what other situations and problems I successfully address living car free check out the uh, survival guide for living in America car free on Amazon but hey man thanks for watching go for a bike ride Later's mark out.